how to combine particle systems with other HTML elements on the website and make them interact together. Let's draw particles that fall down across the screen and bounce when they hit a predefined HTML element. It will work with any element we want or even with multiple ones. In this case I will make them bounce from HTML heading defined by a h1 tag. This is a bonus experimental section of Particle Systems Masterclass. You can download the base source code from part 1 in the resources section below and code along with me today. Or if you want to understand every line of code, watch me write it and explain it from scratch. The full playlist is linked below. Click like if you find some value. We have interactive animated particles that react the mouse. They are drawn on HTML canvas element with an ID of canvas1. I want to create another HTML element, for example a h1 tag that says welcome and id will be caption. The canvas is positioned absolutely, covering the entire web page. I will set h1 to white color, font size 80 pixels and because canvas is position absolute, one way to move h1 in front of it would be to also give it position absolute like this. This is just simple CSS, we are positioning two HTML elements in relation to each other, in this case canvas element and h1 element. If you follow JavaScript animation classes like this, I assume you are pretty good at CSS and you can use your own CSS code to position the elements wherever you need them to be. I will focus on JavaScript in this class. I will give it a font family impact to make it big and thick. And I use absolute position trick to center the text exactly in the middle of my web page. I also give it border, top, 5 pixels solid white. Everything on the web is a rectangle. Particles will be falling and bouncing from this border. Let's change the gradient to a different set of colors. And maybe I can make it point directly down like this. I copy this code block because resizing resets the colors. I paste it here inside the custom resize event. Now it keeps my new colors when I resize the browser window. I set the initial vertical velocity to zero. I create a new property called gravity. Let's set it to a very small number relative to the radius. Later when the effect is working we will change values of gravity to see how it affects particle motion. Radius of particles will be a random value between 3 and 10 pixels. I remove mouse push forces and I will also remove this entire code block that's handling mouse interactivity. We don't need it for this effect. I adjust this code since there is no push force anymore. For every animation frame I will increase velocity y by gravity value which means as the animation runs, Vy is accumulating more and more and the value is growing and we are then adding that growing value to particle's vertical Y coordinate. This will make particles fall faster and faster the longer they fall. They bounce when they hit the edge of canvas. I remove all this code that handles bouncing of the edges except for this check that handles the bottom boundary. Every time they bounce we swap their vertical velocity to the opposite but only to 60% of the force which will make them bounce less and less until they stop. This is nice for some effects and games that include physics if you want particles to bounce for a while and then settle down. I set the initial vertical y coordinate to 0, the top of canvas. I have to do the same inside particle reset method. When particles reach the bottom of canvas, I want the reset method to run, which will move them back to the top and they can fall again. Interesting. Radius is always an integer and gravity is relative to radius, so they separate into groups like this. Also Vy is endlessly increasing by gravity, making them fall faster and faster, even when they reset. Every time they reset, I will set Vy back to zero and I will randomize starting vertical position. I want them to start and reset vertically somewhere between minus radius of the particle and minus height of the effect times 0.5 in this random range. This will separate them out and prevent them from making groups. I also have to copy this and use the same code here for the initial page load. Particles and the lines connecting them disappear instantly when the reset happens. I want to make sure we only reset when particle and the line connecting it to another particle is fully outside the screen and only then we will reset. 
I turn this into a class property to make maximum connection distance available all over my code base, not just inside connect particles method. I turn it into this.max distance property on the main effect object. I set it to 100. I have to use this dot here and here. I reload. Yes, it still works. I only want to reset the particle if the entire particle and the line that is potentially connecting it to another particle would be completely hidden off screen. This covers the bottom edge. I will also reset particles that move off screen to the left, so minus radius, minus max distance, and also to the right when horizontal x coordinate is more than effect width plus radius plus max distance. So if particles are off screen to the left, right or bottom, and they are far enough that the entire particle and the line connecting it is hidden, we reset them back to the top so they can fall again. I want to include max distance in the reset position as well here, and I copy that. And I use it here. It takes a while before they start coming, but they eventually do. What about height times 0.2 here and here? I want particles to collide with text. Let's start by drawing their hitboxes. I will create a property called debug. Initially, I set it to true. I create an event listener for keydown event. When we press letter D on the keyboard, we will toggle debug mode on and off. We set this.debug to its opposite. If it's currently true, set it to false. If it's false, set it to true. I want to create a reference to the h1 heading element in my code. I will save it as this.element property on effect class and I point the JavaScript towards it using get element by ID. I gave it an ID of caption. Once we have it, I will call built-in get bounding client rectangle method, which returns an auto-generated DOM rect object, providing information about the size of an element and its position. I'm running this code locally, but we should probably run this code inside a load event listener, especially if the HTML element is a big image. I will do that later. We need to make sure that this JavaScript runs only when the entire web page is fully loaded and the element is actually there. We can see the element's x and y position, width and height, and other measurements. It measures the smallest rectangle that contains the entire element, including its padding and border. These properties are relative to the top left corner of the viewport. So if this .debug property is true, we stroke rectangle from element x, element y, to element width, and element height. Now we can see the bounding box. I want particles to bounce off that rectangular bounding box, so let's draw their collision areas as well. Particles are circles, bounding box is a rectangle. In this case, because particles will bounce when the bottom of the particle hits the top border on the text, we can actually use collision detection formula between two rectangles, and we will consider particles as if they were rectangles even though they are circles. Let me show you what I mean. For this particular effect, it will make no difference. I say, if this.debug is true, because I want to draw collision boxes only in debug mode, we will stroke rectangle, the collision hitbox around each particle. I want to draw it from particle x and y position, and width and height will be radius of particle circle. They take a while to appear on the screen, so on the first page load, I adjust their vertical position we have here, maybe times 0.5. We know that radius is only half of a circle, so if I want width and height of the rectangle to contain the entire particle circle, we will need to use radius times 2, here and here. X and Y coordinates on canvas define the middle, the center point of a circle, but with rectangles they define their top left corner, so I have to offset horizontal X position by radius to align the hitboxes over particles horizontally. And I do the same for vertical alignment. We see hitboxes on the big text that says welcome, and we also see individual hitboxes of each particle, 
How do we make them bounce now? We are going to use the standard collision detection formula between two rectangles, but because we are offsetting particle rectangles to align over circles, we are making it a little bit more challenging for ourselves. Drawing these rectangles over particles on line 31 will help us to see it easier, because basically this entire thing is x-coordinate of particle rectangle now, this entire thing is the vertical y-coordinate, this is width, and this is height. I need to use these values in collision detection formula. Let's quickly do it step by step, I will show you what I mean. You can find many articles online about 2D collision detection. Rectangle versus rectangle collision is by far the simplest one. They give us the formula here, so I copy this code block. Don't worry, I will give you enough time to type this and go over it with me. I just paste it here. In this case, rectangle 1 will be particle. Rectangle 2 will be the hitbox around the welcome sign or any other HTML element you might be using. This would also work with multiple elements. The formula says only if all four of these checks are true, collision is detected. If at least one of these checks is false, we know the two rectangles can't collide, there is no collision. You can only collide if horizontal position of rectangle 1 is less than horizontal position of rectangle 2 plus its width, if this is to the left of this. Also at the same time, only if horizontal position of rectangle 1 plus its width is more than horizontal position of rectangle 2, if this is to the right of this. If both are true, we know they collide horizontally, but they could still be far away from each other vertically. That's why we have to do these same checks, but this time for the vertical axis. If vertical position of rectangle 1 is less than vertical position of rectangle 2 plus its height, if this is above this. And one last check, if vertical position of rectangle 1 plus its height is more than vertical position of rectangle 2, if this is below this. Only when all four of these checks are true, collision is happening. If at least one of these four checks is false, the entire expression will evaluate as false and we know there is no collision. Rectangle 2 is the hitbox around the welcome sign text. It's just a simple rectangle and I can replace rect2 in all these six places with this.effect.element. Element is auto-generated DOM rectangle object. We know it has X and Y properties, but I notice its width and height are spelled differently than in my formula. I have to say width here and height here. Now it will work. Rectangle 1 is the white collision rectangle that we aligned over each circular particle object. We are inside update method on particle class, so to refer to each particle from here, I will use this keyword. Because circles and rectangles are drawn differently, x and y of a circle is the middle of the circle, and x and y of a rectangle is the top left corner of the rectangle. I had to adjust these values here to correctly draw hitboxes over particles. So for collision detection purposes, we don't care about the particle circle, we care about the rectangle that was offset to contain that particle and that travels with it as the particle moves. This entire expression is x-coordinate of that rectangle, so I copy it and I use it as the x-coordinate of rectangle 1, of particle rectangle, in collision detection formula. I do that here and here. This entire expression is the width. I actually don't want to be calculating radius times 2 for every particle 60 times per second. To save ourselves a little bit of performance, we will pre-calculate that value just once when the particle is created and then we will use that pre-calculated value. Width and height of the particle is radius times 2. Now I can use this dot width here and this dot height here. I can delete this. Actually, let's use colors just for debug purposes. This dot color will be white. We will set stroke style to this dot color here. If collision is detected, this dot color will turn red. Otherwise, if no collision, it goes blue to get a better contrast. I can even fill those rectangles to see it more clearly.
I want the bouncing area to be just the slim border that sits on the top of welcome text. So I don't need the entire height of the element. I can just do 5 pixels. Note from the future, we are offsetting this.x by radius here and here. At this point I didn't do it for this.y here and here. These values should also be offset by radius. It's not noticeable at this point, but it will become more obvious in a second. If you notice that, don't worry, I will fix it soon. I remove all references to this.color. It was just a test. We know that particle rectangles are detecting when they touch and when they are inside the big element rectangle. If collision is detected, I will simply flip vy, velocity y, to its opposite value. And we get this. This is the main logic of the effect. If you want to make it fully responsive, polish the effect, fix a few small bugs and experiment with it, I'll see you in the next part.